All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out the, the final color, uh, yellow. We're going to be checking out the uh, full review breakdown of what I think of all the new yellow cards coming out in OP08. Um, so we got a lot to talk about. Let me try to just dive straight into this. Uh, let me give you a quick format how we're gonna how we're gonna tackle this video. First up, we are going to check out the cards. That will be the majority of this video. The bulk of this video will be going over all the brand new cards, guys, because we need to see what's coming out. We need to know about some of these new cards. A lot of really cool stuff. Excuse me. Then from there, we're gonna go over into uh, we're gonna check out what's winning in the East already as of the first two weeks of results for OP08. From yellow specifically we're going to focus on Calgara I kind of already talked about putting a little bit back in a, I think on the purple video and I'll have all of that linked down in the comment section below so don't worry you'll be able to get to that easily if you've not seen that yet and I definitely recommend checking that out okay so after that after we check out what's winning over in the east we're gonna do a quick just fun game on the sim it's not even related to the cards today just a, you know just a chill game on the sim to end on because I know a lot of people like those videos and then we'll, we'll, we'll finally end on the actual uh, deck list that I'm using. It's going to be a blue-green Zanji matchup versus um, Perona. So, yeah. Uh, so that's it, guys. You, you know what you're getting into. We're going to have tons of spoilers today. A lot of OP08 spoilers uh, coming your way right here. And this is my final video on yellow for OP08. I'll have everything linked in the comments section below. So that way you can click on the next color you want to check out if you haven't gotten a chance to see them yet. Or if you just want to know what I think about a certain card. All right, let's do this. First up, uh, I am going to run through the leaders real quick, and like I've said like three times now, I will have this linked in the comment section below on the leaders, because I've already gone over all of the leaders, you know, in, in, a, you know, in, in detail uh, in, in another video. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will have that linked down in the comment section below. Okay, so first up here is Pudding. I'll at least talk about it so we have some ideas on what we're seeing. Uh, pudding is a four, a four life, 5,000 power leader, purple yellow, big mom pirates type, of course. With the effect of when attacking, you may turn two cards from the top of your life cards face up. Add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it. Okay, um, so the obvious idea here behind this leader is ramping to 10 Dawn as fast as you can, or even potentially 9 Dawn. There, there's big 9 cost characters as well. Uh, but ramping as fast as you can to the late game and dropping down these super powerful bodies. And it acts as like a... It's almost like it's a mid-range tempo deck that gets to the big cards at the time most decks would be getting to mid-range. Very powerful leader here, and it, it, it's actually turning out even better than I thought, but I'll have a whole video on that uh, in the future. Okay, so that's one of the leaders. Now the next one, here's the Altar, it looks excellent. The next one is Calgara. Calgara is a 5-life, five 5,000 power, mono-yellow leader. So we got a new yellow leader, guys. Uh, he is a Jaya Sky Island Shandian Warrior type character, uh, excuse me, type leader. With the effect of Dawn times one, check out this effect, guys. Very interesting. So attach one Dawn, right? Swing for six. When attacking, play up to one Shandian Warrior type character card from your hand with a cost equal to or less than the number of Dawn cards on your field. If you if you do, add one card from the top of your life cards to your hand. Okay, so it's going to be a way to cheat out characters. Uh, this is going to be potentially insanely powerful. It will depend on what they print in the future. And this is a very easy leader. I like the way they did this. They made this leader very easy to, to make it better in the future. Like, say this leader becomes undertuned, no problem. They're just going to print out another Shandian Warrior character that costs more. Okay, because I think we're about to get into it. Sorry, you know, spoilers on spoilers here. But I think the biggest character that this can that it can cheat out currently, I believe, is named Calgara, and it's a six cost, eight thousand power, one thousand counter vanilla character. Well, cheating that out for free, and it's not for free. I guess you are you are losing a life in the process. But think about it: if you are cheating this car this character out, that's massive. You just got a six cost, eight k onto the board for free. You know, re realistically for free. Y'all know what I mean. Like I said, you do lose a life for it. Um, so, but in the future, like let's just say this this leader starts getting a little bit. Uh, it starts feeling a little undertuned with cards with power creep and things like that. Easy, easy fix. All they have to do is print a new card that costs seven that Shandian Warriors that it can that it can um, you know spit out. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, like like I said, I do um, have a whole another video on this uh, going into more detail, and I, I will link that in the comment section below. Really good stuff though. Very interesting leader. And here's the alt art for it. Very nice. 
Okay, and right away, going straight into it without wasting any time here, this is the card I was just talking about. So this is a six cost, 8,000 power character with a 1k counter. The, it's His name's Kalgara, just like the leader. Uh, the type is Jaya, Sky Island, and Shandian Warrior. So when your opponent is at, or excuse me, is it when you're at, hang on one second, play up to one Shandian Warrior type character card from your hand with a cost equal to or less than the number of Dawn cards on your field. So there you go. So on, So as soon as you hit six or more Dawn, all you have to do is attach one Dawn to your leader, attack in your opponent for six or more, however much you want to uh, add. You'll take your top life card and you'll play this card out. Guys, this is very, very powerful. Um, but otherwise, hey, here's one of those situations. I always say that I give van vanilla cards 5 out of 10. And I do give this a 5 out of 10 in a vacuum. But in this deck, this card is like a 9 out of 10. And that sounds crazy. It's just a vanilla. It doesn't even do anything. It's like yes and no, right? Because it's, it's a card to blast out with this leader's effect. Really, really incredible card. Like I said, for in a, in a vacuum, this is just a 5 out of 10 vanilla card. But within the deck of Kalgara, which this is made to play in, this this car, this card right here is a 9 out of 10. And in draft, I would also have different rating, you know, ratings for, for uh, vanilla cards. This would be like a 7.5 or 8 out of 10 in a draft because it's just a massive body that's hard to deal with, and it's a common. Just an all-around great card. Really good stuff here. Next up, we got South Bird. This is a one-cost, 2,000 power character with a 1k counter. It is an animal, Jaya, uh, Sky Island type uh, character. With the, the effect of on play, look at seven cards from the top of your deck and play up to one upper yard. Okay, um, okay, then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. Excuse me. For those who are not aware, upper yard is a one-cost stage that does a top five search as well. So this is like searching for something that searches and searches. And I think that's going to be a weird uh, commonality, like a common theme within this deck. I think you'll see when we get to some of the wiper cards. Uh, but it's a top five searcher. It does not search for anything until they reprint cards, unless they print cards in the future for Upper Yard that can help in other ways. This is a very specific card that doesn't do a whole lot. I'm just going to give this a five out of ten because this isn't like a top five searcher. And I don't know how many decks are even going to run this card. Because it doesn't search for a body. It searches for another card that searches for a body. But the reason this is very important is you'll see there are cards. Actually, I, I can't remember if it's an OP08 or OP07. But there are cards that use Upper Yard. They trash it to, to do more searches. Uh, I'll try to remember to look at that when we're going over the deck list of the video we're, we're uh, looking at today for um, for, for uh, Green Blue Zanji. But I'm just going to give this one a 5 out of 10, even though it's a searcher, because it's not, it, it's, it's kind of requiring you to build in a certain way, and then that's, you know, it's, it just keeps going deeper and deeper. Uh, maybe a 6.5 out of 10 if I'm, if I'm trying to be real generous. Uh, next up is Charlotte Angel. This is a 2 cost, 3,000 power, 1,000 counter, Big Mom Pirates type. Activate main once per turn. Okay, once per turn, you may trash one card from the top of your life cards. Then if your leader it has the Big Mom Pirates type, Add one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards at the end of this turn. So uh, someone actually pointed this out to me on the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, by all means, hop in there. I should have the uh, link in the uh, des description of the video. Uh, but this is a very, very interesting card because think of it like this. Okay, for Black Yellow Linlin, and I'm not, this isn't like a cope. I'm just saying it seems like that's what they literally built this character for because hear me out. So Black Yellow Linlin, right? So say you're at, say you're at uh, two life. Okay, black yellow Linlin's effect says you have to be at one or less life in order to gain life with the effect, and, and it's a four dawn investment. So I think the idea here is you play this out for two, activate this, trash a card from the top of your life like you need to do, and then if your leader has the Big Mom Pirates type, you're going to add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards at the end of this turn. Okay, so in other words, like say you're at two, like I said. You'll go down to one by activating this effect. Then you can pay, you know, use four dawn to swing for seven, and you know, attack your opponent wherever, and gain a life to go back up to two. And then at the end of the turn, you're going to gain another life to go up to three. It's a very interesting effect, um, and it is it is leader locked to Big Mom Pirates. So there's no way that this is not um, intended. For, you know, this this is specifically intended for two leaders. At least currently, right at the time you're recording this video, black yellow Linlin uh, and mono yellow the yellow Linlin, because this also works very well in that deck. Because that deck needs you to be at three life before you start actually benefiting from the effect. Because if you're at three life and you attach to and swing, 
you'll be able to you know take the top card and put it back because you have two or less life. I, I believe that's right. I, I haven't played much of uh, mono yellow Lin Lin, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So in a in a with that kind of deck with this kind of card, if you have four life, you can you know let's just say you trash the top life with this card's effect. And then swing in, taking your top life, replacing that, and then you'll get another card after that at the end of the turn from this this angel, this Char Charlotte Angel cards effect. Something along those lines. Y'all bear bear with me. I know that was a little bit um, a little bit uh, clumsy, but I think y'all get the point. I think this is a good card, but does it help those leaders out as much as they need? Who knows? I'm just gonna give this like a seven out of ten though, because it does actually allow those two leaders in particular to allow you to start gaining life, and it also can be used because notice this. Well, okay, I was going to say it can be used with, like, the Three Brothers stuff, but it can't. Because because what it's... Well, I guess it technically still can, because you can just trash the top life card. But you're not going to get the secondary effect unless your uh, leader's uh, a Big Mom Pirates type. And it does say... It, it's not if your leader is Big Mom uh, from Big Mom Pirates, right? It is Big Mom Pirates type, so this could be used in Katakuri as well, technically. So if you have a card on top of your life that you think is just trash, you'd be able to use this to trash it, and you'd get it back at the end of turn. Just something to consider. I think this card is solid, though. I think it's a great utility card. It's a, it's a nice 7 out of 10. It's too bad they couldn't have made it into a 2K counter, like a 2-cost 0-power 2K counter, or a 2-cost 1,000-power 2K counter, something like that. That would have been absolutely, like, best-case scenario. But as is, I think it's so good, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Next up, we got Charlotte Opera. we got a 6-cost 6 6,000-power 1,000 counter Big Mom Pirates-type card. This card has the effect of, on play, you may trash one card from your hand. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than the, than your num than the number of your life cards. Um, okay, so this is kind of like um, man, this is this one's weird. It's it's the opposite of Gadatsu, right? And you have to trash a card from your hand. But it says you may trash one card from your hand from your hand. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than your number of life cards. Okay, so, so I don't think we've seen this yet. Uh, like this this kind of effect of checking how much life you have. Because typically speaking, like with Kikinojo and Gadatsu, you're looking for how much life your opponent has, right? If they have three or less life for, for Kikinojo. Or Gadatsu pops a card for how much life your opponent has. But this one is like backwards. Because we've even seen where like add both of our lives together for like um, for Yamato. But this one is looking for your life. Um, it's a 6 cost 6k with a 1,000 uh, power counter. That's all fine and dandy. It's Big Mom Pirate searchable. But trashing a card from hand to KO a card based on how much life you have, I'm going to go, I don't think this is that good. I think it's, I'm going to put it at a average card. I'm going to put it at a 5 out of 10 for my rating. Not because it's like horrible or anything, but just because like, would you rather have a 6 cost 8,000 power 1k counter vanilla card that's Big Mom Pirate searchable? Which they have in Parasparo. There's a 6 cost vanilla Parasparo. Or would you rather have this card that like early on in the game it might be good, but you're trashing a card from your hand in the process to KO one of your opponent's characters. And again, that's if your life is even able, able to stay at like 3, 4, 5, late, you know, late enough in the game to play this card. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan. I get it, like maybe comboing this with uh, something like Pudding. Uh, the, the new purple yellow uh, pudding leader we were just looking at maybe this card's best in there where you can just ramp to six really fast when you still have a lot of life left but that leader starts with four life so if you take even just one life you're only hitting a three and you're having to trash card i'm sorry yeah i have to go with five out of ten guys i'm just not a big fan of this card okay next up we have charlotte custard excuse me this is a two cost three thousand power one thousand counter big mom pirates type card with the effect of activate main once per turn you may add one card from the top of your life cards to your hand, and then up to one of your characters gains plus 1,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this card is absolutely awful. Um, I don't have anything good to say about this. You are losing one life in order to give one of your characters, not your leader, only one of your characters plus 1,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. Unless there's a piece I don't know about, like y'all tell me if I'm missing some type of special combo, but this, this card as is is just terrible. Um, I would, I'll, I'll have to give this one a pretty low rating because I always, I always have to compare it to a vanilla card because there are cards in this game that cost two that have 4,000 power and 1,000 counter with no effect. So then it's like, okay, but this one has, this one has 1,000 less power, but the effect is supposed to make up for what's missing, right? The effect is horrible. 
Uh, activate main once per turn. You may add one card from the top of your life cards to your hand, and then up to one of your uh, characters gains plus 1,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. Why not make this a, a, uh, a Whitebeard Pirates card? Because the only deck that I'm trying to use this in, at least in my mind, in my mind, there's only two decks I'm trying to use this in. Blue, Yellow, Ace, and Red, Yellow, Sabo, and I'm not using this card in those decks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to say that. I have no reason to run this card in those decks. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, guys. You guys know I love running janky decks. I like to make crazy cards work that I probably shouldn't. It's, it's something I really try to, you know, I don't want to say I take pride in, but it's something I really enjoy doing. This card, help me out in the comment section below, guys. I'm not seeing it. I'm giving this a 3.5 out of 10. I understand. Yeah, but you, you get to add the card to your hand. Remember the card we just looked at? Um, Angel trashes the card, right? This one lets you add it to your hand. Like, okay, sure, it, you know, it's better than nothing. Maybe you're going to use this with your leader's effect, you know, with uh, with what's her name, like the the, the, the mono yellow Lin Lin card, or, or leader, or black yellow Lin Lin maybe to get down with some, some life to draw a card and do stuff from there. I don't know. Maybe I'm under, I, I have no idea, guys. I'm not saying that, I shouldn't say the card's worthless. I'm already going to walk it back. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 10 and hope that it proves me wrong that it ends up being like this really good card. Because I can see you using it just to draw cards into like, Best case scenario, probably something like against, uh, what's her name, uh, Nami. Like decks that don't want to attack you. Or even like Enel. Enel likes to try to starve out the opponent. Maybe this will help you get down. Like get down in life or something. Um, gosh, alright. I'm, I'm going back up to a 5 out of 10. I went down from a 3.5 up to a 5 out of 10, guys. Y'all bear with me. Because maybe this does see play in Black, Yellow, Luffy. Just as a way to, to lose life early. And if they don't have onboard removal, then, then you can dictate how much life you want to lose as fast as you want to lose it five out of ten final answer okay i talked myself out of that one y'all help me out in the comment section below all right next up is charlotte um poyer I, I don't know how to say that that might be like some kind of like french word or something poyer poyer uh this is a one cost two thousand power 1k counter big mom pirates type it, it has no um effect on the card like it's vanilla but it has a trigger you may trash one card from your hand and play this card, then draw one card. Okay. See, I even like this card. You know, I actually like this card, I think, even better than the one we just looked at. Because it's just a one cost, uh, 2,000 power, 1k counter. Actually, no. See, I wish it was a 2k counter. I, I, I wish it was a 2k counter. Um, but anyway, tr uh, tr you're going to trash a card from your hand to play this card and, and then draw, excuse me, then draw a card. That's interesting. Um... I guess it's slightly still better than a um, than a vanilla card, right? Especially at the one cost slot. Like a one cost vanilla card is a one cost three k. A one cost two k, everyone's used to because that's like the standard searcher stat line. I'm gonna give this a five point five out of ten. I think it's just barely better than a uh, vanilla uh, one cost. Okay, next up, really cool looking art here. We got jewelry Bonnie. The background is interesting to me. Someone, someone, help me out there if they know what's going on. It looks kind of like uh, just almost like void. Something, something's like not, something is very mysterious in the background. I'm not sure what's going on there. So we got a three cost, four thousand power, one thousand counter card. Okay, this is Egghead Bonnie Pirates type, and it has the effect of Dawn times one on your turn once per turn when a card is removed from your opponent's life. Okay, when a card is removed from your opponent's life, so that means like any way that it goes goes. Uh, draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. Trigger, draw two, trash one. This card seems really good. Um, very aggressive card. It's a dawn times one on your turn. So you're going to attach one dawn, and you can get this effect that turn, right? The turn you play her, you can get this effect. You can't swing with her that turn, but you can get the effect right away. That's pretty good, guys. I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty solid effect. Uh, when a card is removed from your opponent's life cards, draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. So you can just attach one to her, like I said, smash in with one of your characters or your leader, and now you're drawing cards and you're cycling through. This is a really, really nice utility card. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. Yes, you do have to take life from your opponent in order to get this effect, and it can only happen on your turn. It, can, it cannot happen on your opponent's turn. But this is a pretty good effect with a lot of upside. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's not leader locked. I think this is a great, great utility card. Okay, next up. Okay, this is the alt art version of the card. Okay, now I can see a background in this one. See, in, in, in the original one, I don't see the background. 
I, I don't see it at all. There's just like some type of pink cloud or mist. But in this one, I see a lot going on. I see some type of building in the clouds here, some kind of floating debris going around it. This has a, um, <laughs> for the Magic the Gathering uh, players out there, it has like, I think it was called Zendikar. I think it was called Zendikar where they had like these floating obelisks and rocks. It has that vibe to me. Okay, and I have seen, you know, some of the stuff on, on like, on how egg, egg, uh, the, the, the whole uh, egghead uh, arc is. I have seen a little bit about that with the cloud, you know, with the clouds in the city up there. Uh, interesting stuff. Really cool. I do absolutely love whatever this artist did with the clouds. It's, it's like she's, it's almost like she's busting through a cloud, right? And, and, and it's still like, you could see part of it just like pushing off of her. It's just, you know, uh, she's, she's like separating it, uh, popping through the cloud here, like, uh, you know, sneak. A sneak attack surprising the the, uh, the opponent there. Really cool stuff. Sorry that was a little clumsy, guys. Uh, very good stuff, though. like the shoulder pad, too. It's got a Buzz Lightyear vibe to it. It's like gold in this one, though. Look at this. So this one has like a gold and white shoulder pad, but this one has like a green and white shoulder pad. I don't know which one's more accurate, obviously, but they both look really cool, and this one gives me more of a Buzz Lightyear vibe. Really cool stuff here. And love, like, the, the way she, she, that she did bust through. There's, like, wings. Her hair, the way, the way, her, the way her hair goes around her back it looks like a cape but it also has an, a, a, a wing effect really cool next up we have nami a five cost five thousand power one thousand counter nami here this is an egghead straw hat crew type card the effect is on play trash one card with a trigger from your hand okay this is kind of like how um amande is right we have to trash a trigger card from your from your hand to do her effect but this is an on, on play only but then it has ko okay I'm listening, I'm listening. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. Then, if you have three or less cards in your hand, draw a card. Wow, and then trigger activates the, the on-play effect. Okay, wow. Uh, very, very strong. It's five cost, 5,000 power, that's fine. It is 2,000 power understated, but they're letting you keep the 1K counter, and then they're also giving you a KO effect built into it. That's a very relevant um, number. Five is one of the most important numbers in the game right now like as far as first of all five for five thousand power for the attack which it has that and then second of all is five for the cost because look at how much this character cost there are so many good five cost characters in the game right now five cost sabo yeah he has protected the first turn but after that you can pop him with a card like this any of the five cost uh luffy stuff five cost ace five cost sabo stuff uh eustace kid five cost momonosuke uh hiyori the the uh, the ev01 hiyori card from green the, the Land of Wano card cheats into play five cost characters. This just hits like a, a lot of nails right on the head. This card is excellent. Um, and did I rate this last one? Yeah, I, okay, I'm sorry. I gave this Jewelry Bonnie a 7.5 out of 10. This Nami is not far behind that. In fact, it might be right around an 8 out of 10. It might be even better. Okay, I, I had a feeling. I had a feeling there was going to be a parallel alt art for this one. It's like, okay, if they're going to do it for Jewelry Bonnie, people love Nami, um, at least from what I've noticed. This only makes sense. This I'll talk about that in a second. Sorry, guys. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This card right here is absolutely cracked, I have to say. Um, the lowest I can give this card is a 7.5 out of 10. Because if you have three or less cards in your hand, you're also drawing a card. And it's trigger activate this card's effect. And by the way, activate this card's on play effect. So if you you literally can draw a card off of this as well. Uh, if, from the trigger, if you have three or less cards in hand, right? Trash one card with a trigger from your hand. KO up to one of your opponents. Well, I guess you do have to have a card to trash from your hand. Still. I believe. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Yeah. Uh, really good, guys. I'm going to give this an 8.5. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Especially if you can keep your hand size low enough. If you're countering out aggressively and you get this. The trigger's nice. The effect is good. It's a 5k body, which is able to attack into life uh, for free for all standard life leaders. And it's a 5 cost, so it has a lot of protection against, uh, against a lot of removal. Just really good. Okay, now for this for this alt art. So this this is such a different style for me. I I almost don't recognize that it's Bonnie. I only do from the hair, of course. Like and and I, I you know the name's right here. It's not, not too hard to see, uh, even like you know out of my peripherals if I'm looking at the picture. But I love the background in this one with these plants back here. This looks really incredible. Like some kind of ferns or something like that. I see these these plants here. Uh, really good stuff. And then you go to the other one, though, like this this, this other alt art. This one's in the clouds, right? I, this almost looks like it's in some kind of digital space. Y'all see, see the like the little triangle right here? Can y'all see? Yeah, y'all can see it pretty good. 
or I hope you can. If not, just say in the comment section below. But this has like a, a very digital vibe to it with the background, and it's and it's got like, you know, clouds or blue skies in the background, right? There, there's blue skies in the background, whereas this one's more grounded, and she's kind of falling into leaves, and she's got this cool, um, you know. She, the way she's holding this this weapon here, it's silhouetted perfectly. It, it, this this one has a lot of character to it. The smile, the eyes, real big. This one though, she is way more focused. She's concentrated, and she's got the staff out here. She's not. She doesn't have the other weapon here. I don't like saying the name of the other weapon, of course. Like those, you know, the, the G the G word for content creators, I guess. But you, you see this, and I love I love this headpiece they have here. That's like the, it's like the futuristic little uh, 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 headphone look. Really nice. Looks really good. Okay, really cool stuff there. And yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I, I also like the boots too. I, I could talk about these for a long time. I, I'm probably going to add a, real quick before we go any further, um, so a lot of people have been talking about it. I just go on rambling, okay, guys? Having teaching in my background, yeah, I can just keep talking forever, right? Let me check the time on this video. Okay, we're doing all right. I can just go on and on and on. And art is something that, that was my actual major was art. I'm, you know, I'm an art teacher for those who are not aware at a high school level um, where I live. But... You know, I can talk about art for a long time, and some people seem to be really enjoying that. So I think I'm, I'm probably going to start incorporating that into my future videos because you guys know I like to do a little breakdown, a, a little layout where it's like, okay, we're going to check out the deck list from the East. Then we're going to go, go over some games on the Sim. Then we're going to go over the deck list, right, that, that, I'm, that I'm using and do some final thoughts. I think what I'll probably start doing at the end of every video is like I'm just going to pick whatever art uh, piece I want to do for the day. We'll talk about the composition. We'll talk about texturing. We'll talk about stuff like that. I'll just add that to a part of the video because, you know, since I'm making these videos like an hour long on average now, I think, or anywhere from like 40 minutes to an hour and a half long on average, or probably hour and 15 minutes long on average, um, what I'll do is I'll just like add a section to the end there where we do a little art breakdown because you could just skip around wherever you want to in the video anyway. I, I, I always try to include that now in the actual um, description of the video is like okay if you don't want to hear me talk about art we'll just go straight to the sim if you don't want to hear me talk about the meta in the east just go straight to this part right stuff like that so uh anyway sorry guys a little, little quick aside there but but i think a, a lot of people have been asking me about that and they've been showing that they actually do enjoy uh when i talk about the art well good news i can talk about art for a long time we'll talk about that later though next up we got nitro so another one cost 2,000 power card with a 1K counter, and it's also Big Mom Pirates. Wasn't that what, sorry guys, I don't need to zip through these. That's what this card was. Uh, and, and then this was a two cost 3K. And this one was a two cost 3K. A lot of very little cards for Big Mom Pirates right now. I'm not a fan of the little cards, unless they're 2K counters with extreme utility. Uh, not that every card has to be competitive. I understand there is still such a thing as draft, right? Uh, but let's see what this card does. So this one has an effect, activate main, you may rest this character, and by the way, this is a homies card, I don't know if I mentioned that, this is a Big Mom, Big Mom Pirates homies type card, activate main, you may rest this character up to one of your Charlotte Pudding cards, okay, and it is a bracketed name, okay, so it, the name is Charlotte Pudding, the cards gain plus 2,000 power during this turn. Ah, man, I don't like this at all. Like, what is this effect? It's like, okay, I played out a, um... A one cost 2000 power searcher last turn let's just say on turn one we played that out okay now turn two i can buff it with this card like what uh, uh, no I, I i'm sorry guys i am not feeling this card at all i don't like the application of it i don't like how specific it is because this card depending on what you're doing in the draft i don't i don't know if there are any charlotte puddings well it is up to one of your charlotte pudding cards okay it can hit the leader if I'm not, someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below. I just noticed that it doesn't say character card. It can still hit the leader, but it's only a during this turn effect. So yes, you'll be able to swing for seven while establishing a one cost body. But you could have just swung for six and, and snagged a two K out of their hand. I don't know. I'm just gonna give this like a. It is. This is basically leader locked. Let's just be honest. Like yeah, you can you can run it in a big mom pirates type deck where you have a one cost put on the board, but that is so impractical and and. It just doesn't make sense, right? It just doesn't make sense to run in a deck like that. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. Because it's only a little bit worse than a vanilla card. And it does have an effect, even though it's not much. I'm just going to give it a 4 out of 10, though, because I'd rather have a vanilla. Okay, next up is Mont Blanc, or Mont Blanc uh, Cricket. This is a 4 call, 6,000 power, 1,000 counter, um, Jaya type, and Monkey Mountain Alliance. <laughs> uh, it's just a vanilla card. I have no idea what that type is. Uh, but four cost, 6,000 power, 1K counter, 5 out of 10, vanilla. That's why I give all those cards. Okay, wait a minute. 
Okay, th these are both Mont Blanc. This is Mont Blanc Noland. He's a five cost 6,000 powered character with a 1k counter. And his type is Jaya Botanist. And he has the effect of on play, if your leader has the Shandian Warrior type, okay, Calgara, right? And you have a Calgara character character in play. I'm assuming they're saying in play. Add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards. Um, okay, you're gaining life, right? Am I reading that correct? So if you play out the, the six cost 8,000 power vanilla character we looked at earlier, and your leader is Shandian Warrior, then you can add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. That's a 5 cost 6k with a 1k counter that gains life potentially. Yeah, so this for me is like a 6.5 out of 10 because you do, it is way better than just running a simple vanilla in this character spot. Like, because it's a 5 cost 6k, it's only 1k under a vanilla. It has the counter. The, the, the types aren't really great. The, the searchability is not really great on this card, at least not currently. But the effect is, okay, if you, if, if, you have it built around this character. That's why I can't get much higher than a 6.5 out of 10. The effect is absolutely incredible for 5. Paying 5 to gain a life is huge, but there is some some stuff you have to meet. You know, there are some stipulations you have to meet. Like, your leader must be Shandian Warrior. You have to have a Calgary character in play. Otherwise, if this was a less... Um, how do I say this? If this effect did not require so much then this would probably be like an 8 out of 10 card. Because who would not play a 5 cost 6k 1k counter that just gains your life, period, no restrictions? You know, I, th I think that would be a very popular card. But as is, I'm still going to give this either a 6 or a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's a great card. Okay, next up is Wiper. So all right, this is the card I was thinking of earlier, by the way. I think I mentioned this earlier earlier when we were talking about Upper Yard with that bird. Uh, South Bird, I think his name was. So this card here, Wiper, is a 4 cost 5,000 power 2k counter. Okay, outstanding 2000 counter guys sky island shandian warrior type and the effect is on play look at five cards from the top of your deck reveal up to one upper yard uh, upper yard and add it to your hand then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order um in any order and play up to one upper yard from your hand Okay, so I do have to bring up this card, uh, Upper Yard, for you guys, just so y'all know what's going on. Because otherwise, you know, it, it's it's kind of confusing. Y'all give me just one second, I'll bring it up. Okay, because this card is what a lot of stuff is going off of. Hang on one second. Okay, I actually have to stretch the screen out over here. Sorry, guys, I'm like, whoa, my, 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 my computer's going crazy. Okay, so this is the card that we're talking about. Sorry, it's a little bit off-centered. Uh, good enough. This is Upper Yard. This is the card that's going to be huge with the Sky Island uh, Shandian Warrior uh, thing going on. It's a one-cost stage. I don't know if I said event. I meant to say stage if I said event. Uh, this stage is one cost on play. You're going to do a top five search for a Sky Island type card and add it to your hand then place the rest of the bottom in any order. So this card, so think about it like this. This 2k counter we're looking at right here, uh, Wiper, it's a four cost 5k. That's great stats. That is great stats, right? It's 2k counter. That's awesome. And this is going to allow you to do a top 5 search for your for your yard, and that yard is going to do another top 5 search. You see what I'm saying? So th this card is a very, very high um, value 2k counter. This card is basically the Perona of yellow. Like the 4 cost 5,000 power 2k counter Thriller Bark uh, Perona. The, the card from black. This is their version of it, like with yellow. This is just really good. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. Because, guys, it's a 2K counter. It's always useful in your hand. But then it also is a 4 cost 5K. Remember, you should be able to cheat this in with your leader's effect, right? With Calgara, right? Because it because it just cheats in a Shandian Warrior. And then on top of that, it's also doing a top 5 search to get to an upper yard. The upper yard's coming into play, which is then doing a top 5 search to another card. Like, it just, it has a lot of uh, chain ability to it. This card is excellent. I'm going, I'm going to go 9 out of 10 for this card. Excellent. Okay, and then we got a parallel um, alt art version here. Interesting. Okay, there's almost, the way that these, um, I guess it's like some kind of smoke or clouds, because I see these little wings. He probably can fly. Like, it looks like he just jumped off the ground, like launched himself at an opponent or something. And the way that these circles go around, excuse me, these clouds or the smoke goes around him, it almost has like this gyroscope type of feel to it. Really interesting. Uh, nice colors too. The, this teal with the orange, like that off, like what is that, like some kind of like burnt? <laughs> what's the card that, or what's the color that um, 
Bob Ross always uses like a burnt, burnt sienna or something like that, like a shiny version of that. Looks incredible. Uh, but yeah, really cool. I like this character, and I guess so does... I feel like we've seen this a few times in the last uh, two sets. Uh, but this card, Wiper, he looks really cool. Like, th this guy... I like how he's, like, flying around, and the dude's got a bazooka on his shoulder, right? Is that what that is? I think it's, like, a bazooka. Looks awesome. Uh, the colors are really bright on this one. Very vibrant. Look back there with the grass and stuff. Looks really good. Big fan. Okay, whoops. I don't know what I just did. Next up, we have S Shark. This is a 4-cost, 5,000 power, 1,000 counter, Egghead Seraphim type. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to pick up the speed here. Uh, the effect is Dawn Times 1. When attacking, your opponent cannot activate Blocker during this battle. So this guy is unblockable. In the as, as, as long as you attach one Dawn to him. And then it has the trigger, you may trash one card from your hand, and if you have two or less life cards, play this card. You may trash one card from your hand, if you have two or less life, play this card. Um, I like that it's not locked to Egghead, because some of those trigger cards from OP07 were like locked to Egghead, or to uh, to uh, Vegapunk, and I don't like when they do stuff that as specific, but I understand why they do it for, uh, for balance purposes. Uh, but this card, uh, I have to say, you know, trash one card from your hand, to, to play out a 4 cost 5k and then if you have 2 or less life cards you can still do it well that's probably when you're going to need it anyway uh, yeah I think this card's fine I think this is a nice I'll, I'll actually give this like a 7 out of 10 because it's a 4 cost 5,000 power 1k counter card and then with the, the uh, potential to be a 6,000 power unblockable character or bigger and then trigger you can play it by trashing a card from hand as long as you have 2 or less life I'm going to give this a, I'm gonna give this a 6.5 out of 10 I'll go 6.5 out of 10 really nice next up is S Snake okay okay the last guy was S Shark and this is S Snake. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a five cost, six thousand power, one thousand counter. That art is is distracting. It is so good. The, the the art is so good on this card. It's distracting. I'm not gonna lie. Five cost, six thousand power, one thousand counter. Egghead Seraphim type was the other one. Yeah, this one was also a Seraphim. The S Shark guy. Um, the effect is on play up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less, other than Luffy cannot attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. Of course. I, I understand, like, thematically what's going on there, but, but guys, for the sake of balance, you can't do that. Luffy's such a strong card in so many different decks. Like, I, I don't think that's a great idea uh, from a development standpoint, like a developed designer standpoint. Um, and then the triggers activate these cards on play effect. That's nice. Again, it's not leader locked. This is just a nice 5 cost 6k with a 1k counter with a relevant effect. So it stops a 6 or less, right? Up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 6 or less other than Luffy cannot attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. It's locking your opponent down. This is almost like a um, a green effect, I feel like. I feel like this is like a green effect. Uh, but whatever the case is, this card is excellent. The art goes crazy. I like the stars. She has like, her iris is like a star. Well, excuse me, I guess not the iris, like the pupil, I think it's called. The black part is a star. And you got the snake earrings. Okay, all right, I see what's going on here. So S snake. Cannot attack Monkey D. Luffy or cannot target Monkey D. Luffy. This is like some kind of boa experiment. I think if I, like, like I say, I, I don't know like the full story, guys. Like I've said many times in the past, I don't know the full story of One Piece. I just watch the spoilers. I just like to stay up with it. I, I'm never, don't ever worry about spoiling something for me. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I can tell this is some type of, um, so, something to do with Boa Hancock. That's all I'll say. Okay, and if that's the case... We got Jinbei back here, too, it looks like. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Spoilers for me if you, if you didn't already know that. I'm sure everyone knows more than I do about it. Okay. Um, I, went, I went forward, guys, and said, um, did I give this a rating? I'm going to give this an 8. I'm going to give this card an 8.5 out of 10, just like I gave, um, uh, I think it was the Wiper card. This card is outstanding. I love the little star right here, too. Notice how it's like um, like it's got the, the, the waves going around it, how it's, it keeps going out and out and out. Uh, this has that uh, Borsalino type of effect to me, man. That looks really cool. Okay, and then, of course, I accidentally sneaked this in. This this art is really cool. I, I like this one better, guys. I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad at me in the comment section below. But this art is so good. I love the colors. And, okay, one thing, it'll take forever to talk about all this stuff, so I'll try to wrap it up quick. You see where the source of light is in this picture? It's coming from behind. I don't know if it's actually this star or not, but the source of light actually seems like it's coming from above her head. So her face is darker because of that, right? It, it adds a darkness to her, her, her face here, to her arm, and then look at her elbow down here. It's even further darker. Uh, but in this picture here, it's like we're the light shining on her, or maybe this, this little heart is the light sh uh, shining on her face. It just has a different effect because we see the shadows on her thighs there. We see the shadow on her dress, on the wings. 
Uh, very interesting. This picture looks incredible as well. But guys, this one is special. I love those yellows. And there's some teal behind the star. Hopefully you guys can tell with the resolution on the uh, on the picture, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the recording. But th this is, I guess, okay. You guys know I'm going to be biased towards this one. White, black, and gold. Those are my colors. That's one of the reasons I really liked. I think it was uh, Albert. Albert was the character's name. It looked like King. In that picture, I feel like there was a lot of white, black, and gold going on there. This one has like the white, black, gold. The gold's more of a yellow, but still, there's different like shades of yellow and gold here. And then a little bit of teal to offset that, that you know, the, the, the triple palette like that, the, the, the three-color palette. Looks incredible. Uh, this still looks good too, by the way, but I'm just saying that that last one. Whew. Okay, we've got S Bear. This looks like Kuma to me. All right, here we go. Now I'm just kind of seeing that, right? All right, so three calls, 4,000 power, 1K counter, no effect, but it has a trigger. Of trigger, you may trash one card from your hand. If you have two or less uh, life cards, play this card and KO up one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less. This should have been a black card, dude. Oh, man, that would have been so good. The, the art is weird on this one, guys. That, the way that mouth and face is, that is... <laughs> That, that is disturbing. That's off-putting. I like the ring of light here. It looks really good. Uh, I'm going to give this one... Did I say... I said 8.5 out of 10 for this one. I think this card's incredible for S-Snake. For S-Bear, I'm going to give this one... This one doesn't have an on-play effect like this one does, right? So, so this is just depending on the trigger to be good. So I feel like this is way more geared towards Egghead or towards uh, Vegapunk. They, they all can be used in Vegapunk. But I feel like this one is like the most geared towards it because you're setting your trigger like this. Um, I'm going to give this one like a, I'm actually going to give this one like a 6 out of 10, believe it or not. I think it's, it's better than a vanilla card for sure, especially in the deck it would go in. But KOing a 3 or less is nothing crazy. It, that is not crazy, guys. There, there's a lot of that going around. Okay, now we have S-Hawk. Okay, I'm assuming this is Mihawk. We got a 4 cost, 5,000 power, 1k counter. Like, are these like little kid versions? You guys got to help me out in the comment section below. Are these like little kid versions of like Boa, uh, uh, Kuma, Jinbei was one of the first ones, and then Mihawk. All right, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, this is an Egghead Seraphim type, just like the others. Um, I wonder if Seraphim's probably the clue there, because I see they've got the angels. I don't know. All right, let me keep going. So Dawn times one. Did I say, did I say guys, this is a four-cost, 5,000-power card with a 1K counter. The effect is Dawn times one. If you have less life cards than your opponent, this character cannot be carried in battle by slash attribute cards and gains plus 2,000 power. Um, okay, so attach one Dawn, he goes to six. And if you have less life than your opponent, he goes to plus two. So this is a, a four-cost 8,000 power card if you attach one Dawn. So it's really like a four-cost 7K if you think about it. And then attach one Dawn, he goes to eight. But you have to attach the Dawn to, to get to get the, 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 the bonuses, the buffs we're talking about. The trigger is you may trash one card from your hand. And if you have two or less, um, two or less life cards, play this card. Okay, so that, that again is keeping it to like under two life, so it's very usable in Vegapunk, and it doesn't benefit other decks too much. See, I like that trigger much better than I like the way Kikanojo was done. Um, I, I love that card, Kikanojo, guys, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying this seems like it's more balanced, where you have two or less life cards. That seems more balanced to be able to get effects like this. Um, but I will say this card seems good. As long as you have less life than your opponent, this is a four, this guy's like attach one Dawn, it's a four cost 8k swinging. I'm going to give it like a, I'm going to give this one like a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. It's not bad, but I also, I'm not just a huge fan of it. Protection from slash attribute characters. Um, it's a thing, but it's also not really a thing. Very interesting though. Interesting though. And if they, if they, um, if you attack and make them lose life with this attack here, and then now you have equal life than your opponent, now your guy's no longer a 4 cost, uh, you know, 7k. Then he becomes a 4-cost 5k, where it's much easier to attack into him, as long as it's not a, a, a slash attribute character. Well, actually, excuse me, it won't matter at that point, because if, if you go down to their life, if you have equal life to your opponent, that, that whole effect is turned off. So, yeah, I just give this a 6 out of 10. Very solid card, though. Okay, finally to the events, guys. I got I to gotta pick it up. The Earth Will Not Lose. This is a 1-cost event from Sky Island Shandian Warriors type. The effect is counter. If your leader has the Shandian Warrior type, up to one of your leader or character cards gains plus 3,000 power during this battle. Excuse me. Then uh, play up to one upper yard from your hand. Very nice. Trigger, draw two trash one. We always take that. That trigger is just excellent. That's. I wish more triggers were like that, more, more of like card draw and not so much affecting the board. Um, but 
I'll have to say that rant for an entire another video. But, but I love this effect. One cost, three thousand power counter. Okay, I'm already you know I'm all ears right now. That's like this is guard point for this kind of deck and better because it also allows you to play out an upper yard from your hand, which should draw you you know it can make you look at your top five cards and that could potentially get you to that two K counter we were looking at right. This guy right here because let me see something on play. Yeah, you'd be able to snag this card with Upper Yard. I still had that on my other screen. Really good stuff here. Uh, so, big fan of this. This is a 7.5 out of 10. Excellent. Excellent event. Very strong defensive event. It's it's literally Yellow's version of Guard Point, but it's, like, even better. Uh, as long as you're running Sky Island, right? Uh, so, Burn Bazooka. Okay, this is a two-cost Sky Island Shandian Warrior type of event. Counter up to one of your leader or character cards gains plus 4,000 power during this battle. Then you may add one card from the top or bottom of your life cards to your hand. And if you do, add up to one Shandon Warrior type card from your hand to the top of your life cards face up. Shandian Warrior type. Can you put back... Let me see the guy that gains life. I don't think he was Shandian Warrior. No, he's not. Man, I was going to say that'd be crazy if you could start looping this guy to the, to the top of your deck with that. And this guy's five costs, right? This, this thing said four costs. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of blasting through. No, it doesn't have it doesn't have restriction on that part. So let, let me let me read this one more time. It's a two cost four K counter. Then you may add one card from the top or bottom of your life cards to your hand. So you're gonna you're gonna grab a card from life, and if you do, add up to one Shandian Warrior type card from your hand. Oh, from your hand to the top of your life cards face up. So so you'll be able to put a card up there like that. Interesting. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but were any of those good triggers or like really powerful effects we needed? Maybe you just put the 2k counter on top so that way it gains your life theoretically. And then if they don't put on enough pressure, you can just play it out next you know, next turn to, to generate uh, pressure that way. Uh, okay, let me keep going. Uh, pretty solid. It's a 2 cost 4k. Those aren't used very much, but this one's nice because it literally lets you cycle out a card from your life to go for answers that way. Um, I'm going to give this card like a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's pretty good, pretty solid, but nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, next up, we got a five-cost event here, guys. This is five-cost Burn Blade. It is a Sky Island Shandian Warrior-type event. With the effect of main, you may trash one card from the top of your life cards. Okay, you're, you're trashing, so you have to have life to use this effect. So trash one card from the top of your life cards. Then KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of seven or less. Wow, that, that's a big target, though. But is it worth it? You're, you're paying a five and trashing a life to KO a seven or less. It's Sky Island Searchable, I guess. Like, that's one thing. Or Shandian Warrior type Searchable, whichever one. It has either one. Um, and then it has a trigger as well. You may add one card from the top of your life to the to to your hand. And then add one card from your hand to the top of your life. That's pretty good. There was an effect like this uh, a while back. I think it was um, Heavenly Fire or something like that. I think there's a few effects like this where you can, like, take a card from life and then put a, put a trigger in its place. So that's really good when you get down to, like, one life left. Excuse me. So like if you had two life left, right, and then you take this, you can you can take your, your last life card to your hand and put like the zero cost event there. You're the one who should disappear and, uh, you know, be able to gain another life in that way. So the, the trigger's pretty good. It's pretty solid. It's not bad. But the main effect is a little costly. Like you already have to pay five just to do this effect and you have to sacrifice a life card to KO seven or less. I get how yellow works. Yellow's not supposed to have access to cards that... Um, that KO, right? So if they have them, then, then they have to like pay life or base it off life. I get that. I get the theme, but I'm not a huge fan of this card. I, I'm going to give this card, I think it's a five out of 10. I think it's just a very average um, type of KO effect. We're like, yes, it hits a pretty big target, but it's got a pretty big cost associated. Uh, and, and it doesn't hit the biggest targets, right? Like eight, nine, and 10 is the threshold of like what, I mean, seven is on the lower end of it, but eight, nine, and 10, those are the boss cards, right? That's where you're entering into the late game when you get to the eight cost, nine cost, 10 cost. And this will cost half your turn on 10 dawn, and this cannot take care of those, period. So still a good card, I think, but I'm just gonna, get, gonna give it an average uh, five out of 10 score. Okay, now we're to the special art. I think there was a special art for every single color. Uh, wow, this one's probably one of the best ones so far. You got the donut down here at the bottom. Got candy canes up here or some type of candy cane design. Got the cherries, the heart. This is some kind of cake back here. It looks incredible. We got a pretzel, some little jewels. Man, this one's really good, guys. And notice, notice I use the word composition a lot. Um, notice the way that this is that they built this. It's like a triangle. You see the way her dress is? It's basically a triangle and then another triangle on top of it for the or even almost even like a diamond shape on top of it for her torso, face, and um 
her bride's, uh, I forget what it's called, the veil, the, the veil for her. Uh, really nice. This is a really, like, really beautiful piece, actually. Uh, the colors are all pink. That's that's good. Looks good. And yeah, big fan of this. Um, I don't really rate these, but, you know, maybe, maybe at some point. Okay, that's it, guys. Finally done with that. Now we have to look at the, the Calgara meta already sh uh, showing up, forming uh, over in the east. Okay, give me one second. There we go. Let me uh, go like that, maximize it. Okay, so if you go to onepiecetopdecks.com, you click on deck list, you go to meta and uh, go to the OP08 meta, which is what they're on over in the east now. Go to Calgara. You could, we already checked out the pudding uh, deck already for the first week or two. So that's in another video if you want to check that out. I'll have it all linked in the comment section below. But for Calgara, first we're going to look at this top eight uh, placing at a 90-player tournament. Let's check it. Let's check this out, guys. Let's see what they're doing already with this leader. Okay. Looks pretty much as we'd expect it. Ohm is Sky Island. That's just massive. Gadatsu is Sky Island, of course. Satori. Shura is a Sky Island. Searcher. <clears throat> holy for the <clears throat> excuse me. Holy for the Gadatsu. Uh, excuse me for the Ohm combo. All right. So here's the card here as well. Uh, Bra Brahm. All right. Let, let me actually go through the list first. I'll, I'll do the numbers. Then we'll go through each card individually. Four Ohm. Two get only two Gadatsus. Four Satori. Four Shura. Four Holy. Two Brahm. Four Wiper. Uh, excuse me, four of the wiper with no counter, the five cost 7k. We'll, we'll click on him in a second to do a quick, <laughs> you know, a refresh on what that card does. Four of the ace, uh, the five cost 7k ace from SD13. Four of the new Frankie card from OP07. This card is incredible. Four Calgara. Four wiper, the, the new 2k counter we just looked at. Two 200 million volts of Maru, because remember guys, this is also Sky Island searchable. Four upper yard and four the earth won't lose, one of the new events we just looked at. So real quick, let's look at some of the cards some people might not know from what we just looked at. Hopefully you know what Ohm, Gadatsu, Satori, Shura, and Holy are. If you don't, like I said, go check out the website, you know, onepiecetopdecks.com, and you'll be able to look up all these decks and spend time uh, studying them. But first, let's look at Braum. This came out in OP06 recently. The, you know, well, you know, a while back now, because we're about to be, for those who are not aware, at the time you're recording this video, we're about three weeks away from uh, OP07 in the West. We were looking at OP08 cards from the East, right? We're about three weeks away from OP07 over here in the West, guys. It's it's coming, you know, it's coming up here pretty quickly. So Braum is a three cost, four thousand power, one K counter, Sky Island Shandorian warrior type, with a activate main once per turn. Place a one cost stage, upper yard, at the bottom of its owner's deck, and then rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. So this is a way to get around blockers, keep up the aggression, and the triggers. Yet if you have two or less life cards, play this card. Just a solid little three cost card, three, uh, turn three, uh, turn two play when you're on the when you're on the uh, when you're on the play. Next up, this is this is this was also from OB06. This is Wiper. This is a five cost, seven thousand power, um, Sky Island Shandora and War or Shandora Warrior type. With, with the effect of on play, you may return one cost one stage to the bottom of its owner's deck. So again, you see how everything revolves around upper yard. Look at the top five cards of your deck and reveal up to one Upper Yard or Shandorian Warrior type card and add it to your hand. Then return the remaining cards to the bottom of the deck in any order. So this guy, this card is huge. It's a 5 cost, 7,000 power card that searches for an Upper Yard, which will help you search for other cards, or a Shandorian Warrior type card. So pretty much everything in this entire deck that you're going to try and that you're going to need. Uh, really good stuff there. Uh, this is just 5 cost, 7,000 power Rush Ace, but it does require you to be at 2 or less life cards to get Rush. And I would say that this is not a good card, but remember what the leader effect does, guys. I know we just read this, but you can lose a life every turn with this character's effect. Okay, so that is massive. It's got the new Calgar, 6 cost 8k. Uh, Frankie, another OP06 card here, 4 cost, 5,000 power, 2k counter. The types aren't relevant on this card, it's just Egghead and Straw Hat Crew. But the trigger, guys, draw one card, then if you have one or less life, play this card. And then again, it's it's a 2k counter. Don't overlook that. Very, very easy to use. Okay. And then 200 million volts of Maru from OP05. Everyone should know what this does by now. And if not, pause it and read it. But yeah, th this looks pretty good. But I'm very surprised they're not running that, uh, that Mont Blanc card. The one that gains a life. The 5 cost 6k that can gain life. But overall, pretty good. Seems like this looks like the pretty natural, you know, direction of a deck like this. Looks really good. Let's look at the others real quick. We'll just kind of blast through them. This one got top four at a tournament, uh, some type of shop uh, CS championship maybe. Uh, and this list looks very similar. 
but they are running the Mont Blanc uh, Norland card. This is the, the 5 cost 6k 1k counter that gains a life if you have Calgara, this, this character in play in particular. Hopefully in the future they do print maybe one more Calgara card, even if, it, even if it's not a bigger card, like make like a lower cost card with an effect, just so you have more targets for this character's effect to take place. Um, but yeah, gaining gaining a life is serious, guys. That's a big deal. So anytime you can do it with a card like this, it's massive. And if you think about if you do it with tempo, like say you, you uh, attack, let's just say it's later in the game, let's just say each player has like around 7 or 8 dawn. If you attack with this effect here, so swing 6, in fact, let's just say you have seven dawn. So, so swing seven, okay? Then you're gonna lose your top life to play out Calgara. Then you're gonna pay five and play this guy out to gain a life right back. And now you played an eight k and a six k on the board. You swung for seven. That's a that's a nice turn uh, by most people's standards. Getting two big bodies out like that, really good stuff. Okay, and this one is trying out El Thor. This is a Sky Island type card. Why not? You know, this is this is a solid card. Give up to one of your leader or characters plus two thousand power for this battle. Uh, and then another two, excuse me, then if your opponent has two or less life, give that card an additional plus two. So this is like a one cost 4k, and they're running the one cost 3k. That's a nice little matchup there, guys. That's a nice little combination. This is almost like guard point plus radical beam for this deck. I'm, I'm a big fan of what's going on there with El Thor and the Earth Won't Lose. Uh, or, or, yeah, excuse me, yeah, the Earth Won't Lose. Now, this one is running Ace, Asa. For a 2k counter, it's a searchable Sky Island 2k counter. That's the only reason. Uh, Frankie is just strictly better than this card, but not if you need to search up a Sky Island card for a 2k counter on the spot. Uh, the on play is look at up to one card from the top of your, your or your opponent's life cards and place it at the top or bottom. It's just like a Katakuri attack, uh, but, but yeah, on a 2k counter body. Of course, Satori's got to go in here. That's too good not to include. Uh, good stuff. All right, let's go. We've got two more, two more decks to look at, then we'll go over him on the sim and we'll wrap it up that way. So this one is running beige at four, two Gadatsus. It's got only two Satoris. That's no, nah, I think four Satoris is the way to go, guys. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. And look at this deck, guys. This is running Gimbo, just a nice three cost five k um, Sky Island Shandorian Warrior card. It's running Ace. It's running uh, Jewelry Bonnie. Yeah, this now this I do like because you're going to be very aggressive with this deck, guys. Let me just explain this. The way this leader is made, this is like a kamikaze style of attack like where you're going all in at your opponent and you're trying to like you know beat them fast and establish these these uh, characters along the way uh so attacking life as much as you are this effect will probably go off you know once a turn if they don't remove this card and and draw two trash one that's generating card advantage this is that this card is a very big deal i might have to mess around with this with black yellow linlin soon this card seems very good okay and then you got s snake Yep, we'll take it. You know, this this card's just a solid card. Um, we already looked at that. And yeah, everything else is pretty much the same, though. It's just running... This one's running four beige. It's running one Ginbo. Maybe they didn't have the four wipers. That's very possible. Y you never know, guys. Because you got to remember, these decks are just normal players out there. They might not have all the cards they need. Okay, and the last list we'll look at. Uh, very similar to what we've already seen, but this one's messing around with the new 5-cost Nami. The new 5-cost 5k, they can pop a 5 or less, and if you have to realize cards in hand, draw a card. You just have to get rid of a trigger. Now, you are running 1, 2, 3. Uh, so, tr you're running 14. Hang on. Um, I guess I should count this one as well, because it can trash itself for the effect. So, 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, 22 triggers. Okay, so you should be able to get this effect off. You should be able to get it off. Uh, pretty pretty reliably. Other than that, everything else looks the exact same. Good stuff. I really like the Frankie. I think this is... Once we get to OP06... Uh, excuse me, OP07, guys, in, in the West, I think this is an auto-include 2K counter for, for almost any yellow deck or any deck running yellow. It's, it's just that good. Okay, good stuff. So that's it for, um, for that. Let's go ahead and hop over to the Sim. Got a blue-green uh, Zanji deck here. Let me... Uh, where's my face at? There we go. Let me move it over here. Let me go full screen. And I think we're good to go, guys. Yeah, let's check this out. Let's hit play. We're on full screen. We got volume off. Let me make sure the speed is at 2x. It is. Good to go. So in this list today, guys, um, someone in my uh, Discord said that, that, you know, they were having trouble with Zanji. Uh, I think their name was Akai or Ak A-K-E-I. Not sure how to say it. And they, they, they were running this list. I said, all right, let, let, me, let me run it. it. This is a small Zanji, okay? Usually I run film Zanji or seven warlords the C Zanji. This list is like the two cost Z Zanji, whatever you want to call that. I don't know the technical name for it, but this is running the, the small cards. 
Well, okay, so I, let, let me try it. Let's, let's give it a try. This is against Black Green Perona. Now, this is still OP06, I believe, that we're looking at here. I don't think this is OP07. I could be wrong. Uh, but I believe this is OP06 EB01. Uh, this was before they even updated the sim. I just I pre-recorded this, and I was going to use it in a future video. And this version's running nothing but the two-cost uh, cards. It's running three-cost um, Ivankov, and then eight-cost Kid. Like That's like everything. And the idea behind Zoro and Sanji is to fill up the board and just smash your opponent in one turn for just like seven or eight attacks. That Ivankov gets to draw you a card if you have five or less, or maybe it's six or less cards in your hand. Whenever you attack, you can draw a card from the top of your deck. So what I'm trying to do here is I just want to keep contesting the board and making my opponent attack into the board, and then I want to get down a Eustace Kid. Like, that's pretty much my whole strategy. If they can remove it, it should cost their whole turn, and by which time I should have been able to put on enough pressure for, for them to, like, be in trouble. Um, I swung out with Ivankov. I'm not letting him have that. I'm pulling it back to my hand just with my leader's effect so that they can't... Oh, excuse me, so I could cheat out again with the, the Law's effect. <laughs> okay, I just completely... Because it was tapped, I didn't want them to get it, but I actually used the law so I could cheat the, the Ivankov back out. I set those cards with Usopp so I knew what I'd get. That Uruj, or Uroj, that card is a two-cost, 3,000-power card that has Dawn times one. If you have three or more characters on the board, he gets plus 2,000 power. So that card can get big very quickly. One thing I will mention about this deck, this version, and I, I will link it at the end of the video, is it requires way more... Um, way more... Uh, there's way more intricacy to it than I had originally thought, like than I, than I first expected. Uh, I have to say, like it, it has to be said, it, it requires way more intricacy than I, than I first realized by setting at the top of your deck, playing out cards from the top of your deck with cards like um, Ivankov, with cards like Plastic Surgery Shot. Uh, it, it, it's actually a pretty high skill level deck to be completely honest. I swing three into three here. He actually gives me a 1k counter. I'm like, uh, okay, sure. I'll swing five into three. There's no way you're counting out of that. And guess what? We're gonna play out. Uh, we're gonna play out Rosinante. We're gonna establish this Eustace kid. It's your turn. You have four cards in hand. I've got a pretty full board here. I can pull back my. Um, I can pull back my sugar anytime I need to to rest one of their four cost or lower characters. Uh, feeling pretty good. Well, okay. Then he KOs it. That's fine. I'm not gonna use Rosinante to save that. He only has five dollars left for the turn. If he plays out another card, which he does, now he can't even attack into me, right? Because you have to attack into Eustace kid for those who are not aware. Uh, he plays out Rebecca. I think he got a 2k counter back to hand. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And right here, okay, I'm just going to tap that card. We're going to swing 9 at face. Okay. Then right here, swing 7 at face. Guys, in, this guy is in trouble. Guys, watch this. Swing 8 at face. Return sugar. Stay in that guy. If you can't counter out of this, you're just, you're gone, right? Okay, so he does counter out of it. No problem. Going to swing seven at him anyway. And then I'm going... I don't know what he did there. Oh, oh, he got an Ice Age to get rid of my Rosinante. Unlucky, but I'm still not too worried about it. I'm going to set my top uh, my top cards in my deck. And I'm feeling pretty good about this game, right? Because I have Sugar in hand. And notice what I... Excuse me, I do have to go back real quick. Sorry, guys. Notice what I put on top. Ah, that was too fast. Pretty sure I put the other Sugar on top. Just in case. Just in case he has another Rebecca. <laughs> And uh, you'll see how this go, how this pans out. I'm feeling pretty good at this point. He's going to swing 11 into 8. I can't block out of that. It's gone. Plays out another Rebecca. But we're not too worried, are we? Let's see what he does here. The correct play is, of course, to take out my board, which he does. Swing 5 there. Swing 5 there. Gets rid of my board. Okay. But my top card is a Sugar. We set it there. Sugar. Sugar. Swing for 13. Or excuse me, swing 11. There's no way he can get out of that, even if they were all 2Ks because it was 11 into 5. All 2K counters would have gotten to 11, and it still wouldn't have been enough. GG. Very fun. Uh, very fun deck to play there. Okay, and I don't think I had up. Let me put something up real quick. Um, I didn't. I got to grab my... Um, I got to turn on the game real quick, guys. I'm sorry. I forgot I forgot to bring the game up, the game up so I can't bring up the, uh, the deck list until that's up. Um, but yeah, this was a pretty interesting list, I have to say. Let me move my face while we're waiting for it. Okay, move the patrons thing there. Get the sim up. Go over to deck editor. Okay. Now, now we're there. All right. Let me find it. I think I called it. What did I call it? Oh, did I call it? 
<laughs> it's going to take me a second to find it real quick, guys. I do apologize because sometimes I come up with these crazy, uh, crazy names for stuff. As you can see up here, you might be able to see nothing inappropriate. But what did I call this? Uh, UG something? Oh, blue green. Yeah, here it is. So that was the person's name, A-K-E-I. And this was the list they sent me. I didn't change anything. I just She was just asking what kind of uh, advice I could give on it. And um, that, that's just one of the benefits of being in the Discord. Every now and then, if you come up with an interesting list, I'll probably throw it in the video. Um, let me run through the list real quick, and then, then we'll wrap it up. The video's running long. Four uses kid. I don't have to explain this card. It's that good. 2K chopper. It's just a nice two-cost card. Um, because, so let me explain this real quick. The entire deck is built around tempo with this card in Poyo Ivankov. Because it's a three cost, 4,000 power, 1k counter, that's all fine and dandy. But the on play, reveal the top card of your deck, play up to one cost two character card. Not two or less, not two or more, two. Cost two character card, then re return the remaining card to the top or bottom of your deck, whichever one you want. That's why every card in this entire deck is a two cost character card outside of Eustace Kid and outside of Plastic Surgery Shot. So your chances of hitting it randomly are actually very high. Now, you know, it might be a card that's not as good, like Tony Tony Chopper, but it might be a card that's absolutely incredible, like Trafalgar Law. Trafalgar Law in this deck only has one target, and it is Emporio Ivankov. Notice what this says. Two cost, 3,000 power, 1k counter. Activate main, pay one. Return this character to your, the owner's hand. Play up to one character with a cost of three, not three or less. Things are very specific in this deck. It's, three or it's, it's just a three cost character. This is the only available target. Now, the nice thing is, of course, once you get to drop your Eustace Kid, which is how you should be... The way that I recommend playing this deck is you literally just fill the board out as much as you can early on. Just keep a little bit of pressure so that you can drop this card. And then you'll play out with this card. You can either play out a Sugar to rest one of their characters. Or, ideally, you'll play out a Rosinante to protect your Eustace Kid. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. This is just a nice 2-cost 2 2k counter card here. Card here. Nice 2-cost blocker here. There's a lot of good stuff in this deck you could cheat out. Um, Usopp can look at your top five cards. Now, I think this card is a little pricey currently. Let me see something. Why am I not? There we go. I will, I will look it up real quick on my other screen just while we have this up because I do think this card's a little, a little bit pricier than it should be at the moment because it's a promo. Yeah. So this card is $17 a pop for this Usopp right now, guys. I know. I'm sorry. I, I'm not a fan of that. For anyone who's wondering, I do not support those kind of prices, especially on a card that is a promo exclusive. Like, how else were we supposed to get this card other than buying it from the secondary market? Guys, I'm right there with you. I'm in the same camp as y'all. I can't stand when they do stuff like that. I'll probably have a whole video dedicated to that in the future. Uh, but yeah, this card is going to be a little bit of a struggle to get. Um, but yeah. Uh, and that's about it, guys. Sugar. Now, r remember, this is not a Don Quixote Pirates, so only the on play works. The the uh, opponent's turn effect doesn't work because your leader's not Don Quixote Pirates. We talked about Rosinante. Uh, pause any of these if you don't know what they do. This is the Urush card. This is from ST02. Um, this is a just a nice 2 cost, 3,000 power, 1k counter. There's not many bricks in this deck, guys, like to be honest, because Plastic Surgery Shot's not really a brick. It's, it's actually this, this event right here. It's a counter itself. Uh, now, yes, Eustace Kid is a brick, and so is Sanji, but these are the two all-stars of the deck outside of Emporio Ivankov. Sanji, read what this card does real quick, guys. It is a 2 cost, 3,000 power, Dawn times 1, when attacking, if you have 5 or less cards in your hand. This character gains plus 2,000 power until the start of your next turn. That is not a once-per-turn effect there, guys. That is not a once-per-turn attack, attacking effect. So if you can stand him up with your leader, as long as he's under 7,000 power, you know, so that you can stand him up with your leader, swing again. Really, really good. Um, and Emporio Ivankov, of course, we just talked about this does, and then Eustace Kid. Th these are the three all-stars of the deck right here. And it makes a lot of sense in, the, in terms of, like, this character's effect. Like, Sanji's effect is actually really good. Because you want to flood the board, right? You're trying to play out all your cards on curve, like throw out Uruj and, Ap uh, and Apu on, on like one turn if you have to. Well, save this one because it's a 2k counter. But you get my point. Like Alvita, Scratchman, Apu, and Chopper, those are your 2k counters. But this is also a 2k counter event. That Look what it does, guys. Uh, give up one of your opponents, uh, excuse me, give up one of your leader or characters plus 2,000 power during this battle. Then reveal the top card of your deck and play up to one cost two character. Then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck you know, in any, at the top or bottom of your deck because it's only it's only revealing one card. So you have Duval to do a top three search. You have Usopp to do a top five search. A lot is going on here, guys. It's, it's a really interesting deck, and it, it requires quite a bit of skill. 
I think the problem though is it, it I did struggle when testing this deck out because I put about 10, 10 games in and I feel like I struggled against the decks that go tall and have some form of removal built in even if it's not a lot of removal just something to slow me down and then they could just smash into my Eustace kid later in the game like I think it was a nail I had a, I had a nail biter of a game versus a nail where it came down to the final attack and man I gave it everything I had guys I promise I tried so hard to win with that deck but I just couldn't get it there uh, but other than that I think this deck is very solid I didn't think I would like it, and I, I don't like it as much as seven War, the Seven Warlords of the Sea version coming out in OP07, but it was a lot better than I thought. It was a lot better than I uh, originally gave it credit for. I was like, oh, this can't work. You know what I mean? There's no way I would ever... Uh, well, not that it can't work. I shouldn't say that, but this is not what I want. But it's way better than I thought. But I will say this. As much as I like this version, I still like the Seven Warlords version better, and I still like the film version as well. I, I Hopefully that... You know, hopefully we get more cards in the future that can help support that version, because I do think there's something there as well. All right, I'm done rambling, guys. Uh, this video went way longer than I thought it would be. Uh, let me go ahead and put the patrons thing here. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Anyone who likes, subscribes, comments, shares, just views these videos, you're helping me out big time. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Uh, big shout out to my patrons over here on the screen. You guys are the best. Uh, thank y'all so much for helping me. I will keep you guys updated on the play mats coming. That should be right around the corner, probably about a week or two away. Um, I'll keep y'all updated on that. But yeah, that should be it for now. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, if I missed something, please tell me out in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, peace.